LeBron James, from what I understand, uh, comes out in the 2003 NBA draft. Very good draft. Chris Bosh, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade. And he's highly touted, right? I can remember the hype about the guy was as, as big as anybody I've ever seen. He exceeds expectations as a player. So much so that we sit around and have these debates on who is the greatest of all time. Shout out to Taz, even though he's wrong with that. When you look at the greatest of all time, you're always talking about three people, Kobe, LeBron, Jordan. But what people don't give LeBron credit for is out of all of those three players, nobody has more control of the NBA with other players and with networking and making things happen and they can impose their will on the league like LeBron. No player has ever done it. He's the vice president of the Players Association. He's good friends with Chris Paul. He leverages his authority in business. He walks away from a $15 million deal with McDonald's and then um, partners with a, 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 a company. It's a pizza company. I don't know what it's called right now. LeBron, in, in this way, when it comes to using his authority as a marquee player, nobody's ever done it like him. And LeBron also knows how to leverage in other people to partake in his dynasty. Because LeBron wants to be a team owner one day. And who better than that than a buddy he met while selling some jerseys to him at a Cleveland airport or somewhere around here. I don't know if it was Atlanta. Chris, uh, no, Rich Paul. Rich Paul is a guy who is not collegially educated, but he's savvy. He's a hard worker. He has brains. He's somebody that LeBron knows can help leverage the authority in the league. And then here is Clutch Sports, where Rich Paul becomes agent. Now, with the best basketball player in the world and Rich Paul as the agent, and with everybody wanting to be with LeBron, wanting to play with LeBron for the most part, with the authority LeBron has, which Paul is able to go and do all of these things. Become the most talked about agent in basketball. Beating other people that have been there for years. And then now he is changing with the league. Let me tell you how he's changing. We all know what he did with the Anthony Davis thing, right? Pretty much forced a trade for New Orleans to L.A. And nobody's been able to bully a deal like that before. But we know about that. But see, what we're not talking about is Rich Paul has a player named Darius Basley. Now, instead of going to Syracuse, what Rich Paul said is, hey, how about opting out of that year? Don't don't even go to college. You're only going to be there for a year, right? How about you take a $1 million internship at a shoe company now now the NCAA is pretty pissed off right think about it the NCAA for a lot of these players that are going to be highly touted back in the day most players was you know graduate like in Jordan he would say his junior year now guys are one and done so you have a, a a 13th top ranked guy coming out of high school and you mean you, Rich Paul, you're going to pluck somebody that's going to make us a lot of money as an NCAA organization to sit for a year and go to the G League and give them a million dollars? Oh, no, bro. We got to sit you down. Especially what you're doing in the league. Now, granted, the NBA don't have a problem with Rich Paul like that but the NCAA does. So what way can the NCAA protect its investment? Well, the NCAA can't do anything to somebody who's coming out of high school who doesn't want to go to college. But think about Darius Basley and the risk he's taking. You won't be playing on, uh, on, uh, on national TV. You'll be somewhere in the G League. You'll be sitting for a year. 
You'll have that million, but you won't be able to play in the NCAA Sweet 16. We won't be able to see you. The scouts won't be able to see you. You know, if you really want to get into the league, you want to go to a big name school, Duke, Louisville, Kentucky, North Carolina. You want to get seen on TV. So the NCAA is betting that most of our guys that are coming to the NCAA are going to be one and done. So, Rich Paul, i tell you what we're going to do. Since you want to mess with our money, you got to have a bachelor's degree. Or, let's put it in their terms, everybody has to have a bachelor's degree. That means if you want to come out early and you might not be able to go back, because here's the thing, you might want to come out after your first year. But you might want to, if you sign with an agent, you might not go so high. So you might want to keep your eligibility and go back if you're not drafted. But if you sign with Rich Paul and Clutch Sports, he don't have a bachelor's degree, you automatically give up your eligibility. That's the NCAA rule. But see, I'm going to be honest about it. I'm not the one that's thinking it's just solely a black thing because Rich Paul is messing with the NCAA's money in the way that they're looking at it. So this is a hit at him. But other people, Matt Barnes, who's from my city, Evan Turner, they say something particular. People are mad because this is a black man beating the white man at his own game. So they got to change the rules. I was talking to George about this. He said, man, nobody in the manosphere is talking about this, brother. You have to really talk about this. I thought about it, and I saw it. And I was going to make a video about it. And I kind of thought about it. But you know what? I think that here, Matt Barnes, Evan Turner, LeBron James himself, they got to have a point. Because, see, they getting too close. They forcing deals. They walking away from McDonald's sponsorships. They gaining too much power. In other words, we cannot let these Negroes run the league. And we damn sure can't let these Negroes stop the NCAA from eating. And also the other agents, I'm pretty sure, got something in on this too. This, I think, is a direct attack on clutch sports. But see, I want to make a whole big other thing about these two brothers working together. Because see, LeBron James, I don't like his political views. I don't like what he stands for politically, but he's our people. Rich Paul is an African-American. And the one thing that I got to say, when they start changing the rules, when we enter in the market, damn it, we own the right track. And see, we talking about black men working together. We got to talk about this in the black manosphere. This is what Rich Paul and LeBron have been doing for many years. And now they've been working together building a great relationship, helping each other out, gaining authority in the market. And guess what? All the players are black. A lot of the players don't trust those agents. They don't trust those non-black agents, but they trust LeBron. LeBron is good. They trust Rich Paul. And these people know that. And this is the way to stop it. So now they are changing the rules. And this is what I want to tell you, brothers. When it comes to the point that they got to change the rules on you working together with other black men. You on the right track. Because see, if they're not changing no rules, you ain't doing nothing. I'm not doing nothing. None of us are doing anything. But when they got to change the rules. Because see, those NBA players, they know. See, I'm not a basketball player. I can just assume what I think is going on. But see, the guys who've been in the, in, in, in the NBA for a while, they know how it works. They, they know it for what it is. They know it for what it is. And I will got to say that they got a point. I don't know how true it is, but I believe there is some truth to it. And it just goes to show the danger that many people have when black men are entering industries that they typically should not be in. See, ain't a lot of black sports agents. But see, what happens if LeBron opened the door for Rich Paul and Rich Paul start opening the door for other people? What if you start having more black players 
and more black uh, uh, agents representing black players. You talking about building a community? That's a good damn way to start in the sports industry. It's a big, 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 huge amount of money. And you can't say that LeBron don't give back to the black community. He does. Right? That's money and opportunities we can provide for black people. And LeBron James, in my opinion, is definitely pro-black. Damn right. I don't like his uh, political opinion, but he pro-black as I don't know what. And see, here we're talking about. Here we go. George made it a, 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 a very interesting statement. He says, the players don't have to have a degree to enter the NBA draft, but the agent got to have one. Now, make that make sense. That's a damn good point, ain't it? Most players coming out after one or two years ain't graduating. But the person that you got to talk to to be your agent got to have a degree. Ain't that something? Ain't that so deliberate? But let them keep changing the rules. Because why? If the rules ain't being changed, and the same thing happened with blacks in the South and the civil rights, when they got to change the rules to keep you out, you own the right track. So all brothers is going to do is go ahead on and get that degree. Don't get that degree. Go ahead on and get the law degree. Get that on them. And make them change it again. Make them change it again where it's so deliberate they got to yield. Because why? LeBron and Rich Paul, they want power. They want to seek power. They're not, they not, they 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 they're seeking power with their authority. And they're not used to black men doing that. Black men are not supposed to be seeking power like that. But this is why black men have to work together. And damn it, there's no better organizational administrational shift than you see with Rich Paul and LeBron James. I don't care about their political views. I don't care about how they feel about Trump. But the brothers is making moves and we should be supporting them. So, brothers, what do you think about this? Let me know. Um, comment, like, subscribe if you're new here. I'm, I'm O'Shea Duke Jackson. I'm talking about black men working together. This is all I focus on. And as you know, the buffoon remains at an all-time high. If you want to subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com backslash Negro Manosphere. Link will be in the first comment. And I'm out.